Welcome to Deep Tech 315. I'm Gene and that is Mike. Uh, Mike is joining us uh, this week as uh, he is a venture partner at Deepwater. For those who've been following me for a long time, Mike has been an important part of my career and now my calling. Uh, Mike is famously known in 2004, 2005, I forget the exact year, but he coined the term halo effect. Uh, he has a hard time uh, acknowledging this, I can tell you it is true, uh, the concept of buying a product and uh, then wanting to buy other products from a company. Uh, he famously associated the concept of an iPod to buying Macs. And so awesome call. We've had a, a, a ton of fun working together. I wanted you to join related to what we're hearing in some of the private markets related to AI. That is our second topic. Our first topic is related to NVIDIA and our last topic is Tesla. So in, uh, in, in this order, we'll kick it off with NVIDIA earnings. Of course, that was the big one this week. Uh, results exceeded expectations, high expectations on the top end by 6%. They guided the July quarter 5% higher than where the street was at. And of course, uh, the stock was moving in the right direction. It was up about 3%. And then Jensen, during the earnings call, said that they're going to sell a lot, a ton uh, of B100s, B200s in, two, in uh, this fiscal year. And the stock continued to move higher, ended up closing up 10%. Uh, there's been a ton of scrutiny related to the NVIDIA earnings, but I want to take it in a slightly different direction. What we saw with NVIDIA is important because it shows that the pace of innovation, the pace of building the infrastructure around AI is accelerating. Uh, we've had high expectations around the speed that this infrastructure is being built and they are exceeding those high expectations. And the reason why that's important is you layer that in with a comment at, uh, that uh, Sam Altman had this week at Microsoft uh, Build Day was that uh, the reason why that infrastructure is important is that gets us closer to these plateau step ups, the speed of improvement in the models. And why that is important is that the faster we are revving on the models, the more quickly we are going to get to artificial general intelligence. And if we think that what we're seeing in generative AI is groundbreaking, when we see general intelligence, it's going to be five orders of magnitude more impactful. Every company, every information worker, every technical worker is going to be impacted by this. And so I left uh, the NVIDIA, for, forget about the, 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 the earnings, forget about the, this next quarter, forget about what 2025 is, forget about NVIDIA stock. What's important is that AI is happening, it's happening faster, and I think that this ultimately is going to lay the groundwork for what's going to be a three to five year bull market that will end a spectacular uh, bursting of a bubble, uh, potentially even bigger than what we saw in 2000, just given the fact that AI is going to be more transformative. And so that was the takeaway on it. There's a lot of different ways that you can invest in that. I just think in general, forget about inflation, that's uh, noise on the edges what we're seeing around this build and infrastructure on AI getting faster to general intelligence was the key takeaway from NVIDIA earnings. So we're gonna shift. What, what do you think slows down NVIDIA? Do we ever reach a, a plateau or a saturation point on chips? Like I've, I've heard some, some chatter out there that $100 billion has been spent on AI infrastructure and only $3 billion in revenue has been generated. How do we how do we get to a point where there's an equilibrium there and and does that ultimately have a negative impact on nvidia if we if we don't get there soon the growth rate's going to slow dramatically a year ago this is just mind-blowing to me in in the april quarter of 2023 their business was down 13 percent uh, year over year and then of course the most recent quarter is up almost uh, 270 percent they guided for the uh, July quarter to be up 107%. And the street now is looking for 28% growth in calendar 25. And so uh, what is going to cause it to slow, number one, is this is, I mean, we've seen this before. We've, we've watched, we've experienced, we've had front row seats to all these companies. There's never been a story like this in terms of hard comps at scale like we're seeing with NVIDIA. So the growth rate is going to slow, number one. What's going to keep it going ultimately is that there are these four layers of the cake when it comes to AI. 
Uh, Jensen talks about these. It's training and inference at the top. We've got applications at the second layer. Industrial AI, still not quite sure what industrial AI is, and then sovereign, which is countries. And so the uh, the the uh, NVIDIA is not going to grow at 40% forever. The growth rate is going to step down pretty significantly. Um, uh, the, and ultimately, I think that it will exceed expectations for the next uh, a few years. I think that it'll grow probably 35% through 25, 26, calendar 25 or 26. Um, but they are those those other three stacks in the layer that are coming applications in this industrial and sovereign. And so I think that there's enough still expansion for this to continue. But uh, you know, as I as I was angling towards at the top, what's really important to me is just beyond Nvidia and just thinking like this is just laying the groundwork, which gets us to our second topic, which uh, something that you've been paying close attention to this past week is the three developer days. Uh, I guess we had the one this week with Bill, but of course the two uh, last week. And well, there really wasn't a ton to say about Microsoft. I think it was generally underwhelming. I think that they essentially got previewed by uh, what OpenAI said in the previous week. So we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about that. But as I was thinking about the relationship with OpenAI and Microsoft and thinking about how critical, I mean, the soul of Microsoft right now is OpenAI, a private company that was basically sub $100 million in revenue a year ago, now $2 billion plus, just how important these private investments are for these mega caps. And so I thought it'd be great to bring you on and just give us some perspective, like one-on-one, you're a venture partner, you're looking at deals. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of just what the AI private uh, landscape looks like and what are the big tech companies doing relative to investing in some of these smaller companies? Yeah, I mean, to your point, something we're seeing increasingly is is the mega cap companies getting more aggressive with venture deals and they're investing earlier. In some cases, they're investing in companies that are directly uh, competitive with, with other companies that are in their portfolio or even uh, uh, competitive with stuff that they're doing. I mean, look at Microsoft. They hold a large equity stake in OpenAI, but now they're competing directly with OpenAI through the development of, of some of their own models. So and then when you, have... you said they're early, like how early are we seeing some of these? Are they in doing at C rounds? Are they A rounds? Like how early is early when we're seeing these big tech companies yeah. coming in? Yeah, I mean, the ones you hear about are obviously uh, OpenAI Anthropic. or Anthropic with Google and Amazon both both diving in there. And those are the ones that uh, are in the media. Those are also the ones that the, the FTC might take a look at, which we can talk about in a minute. Um, but the answer to your question is super early. So we're seeing uh, some of these mega, tap, mega cap companies participating in pre-seed rounds pre with pre-revenue companies. Yeah, I mean, and instances where it's just, you know, two founders in a, in a deck potentially. And so that makes it, um, you know, a situation where, again, to get into the, the regulatory piece that I alluded to, the, the companies are, are working harder to try to uh, get a position to, to benefit from some of these trends going forward, but they need to be cautious about the potential FTC ramifications of that. And I think the earlier that they participate in some of these companies, uh, the better off they'll be. Uh, avoiding just investing in already, you know, unicorn or or multi-billion dollar companies. So that, that should help them. The theory is by investing earlier, then they won't be as under the, the microscope when it comes to the FTC. Yeah, exactly. And so back to what I said, you know, pre-seed rounds, seed rounds, et cetera. For example, a company we recently invested in out of Deepwater Venture Fund 2 at, um, you know, a low tens of millions valuation. With, that's a pre-revenue company. Uh, Microsoft came on as a investor after we were the first money into that company. So they're getting involved earlier. Um, it does create a more competitive uh, environment in some ways, but in other ways, uh, the competition has always been there. And it's just something that whether it's from uh, large uh, mega cap companies looking to get involved in these types of deals or whether it's just other venture funds or entities um, that may be looking to get uh, directly involved in an investment in a pre-seed or seed company, we've had to always deal with that competition. So in some ways it's different, but in a lot of ways it's similar. So two questions. One is uh, when you talk about competition, what does it mean in terms of valuations? I remember when we were doing investments in 2018, a typical pre-seed round was right around eight to 10 million or a seed round. That's post money valuation. They'd be raising a million dollars. Uh, what does it look like in AI uh, private uh, seed world today in terms of valuations? 
Yeah, the average or median hasn't really changed um, significantly. We're kind of looking at, you know, eight to 10 million, like you said, back in 2018 to something uh, more like the low, low to mid double digits. So let's say 12 to 15 million okay. today. Um, the, uh, the point that you made on AI is, is important, which is that that's all dependent on what segment of, of um, you know, tech we're looking at. So AI is going to have, um, generally speaking, uh, a little bit frothier valuations than, than other segments. And that, that froth is, I don't mean to, to belittle it, it's, it's, it's well taken. It's important uh, to note that uh, it's, it's fluff, froth, but not fluff in the sense that um, AI is obviously uh, the next major paradigm shift in tech. So uh, that those valuations are well-deserved. Um, the equity what is the value? What are they? Is it is it fifteen million? Are you typically seeing uh, thirty million? What's the? Yeah, I, I mentioned the one we did um, fairly recently, where it was more of a thirty million valuation on a seed for round, a, a, a pre-seed pre -seed round, thirty with million pre-revenue pre -revenue company. So this yeah. would have been so, eight million yeah. in twenty eighteen, something like that. Yeah, so it's a big big change on um, on the AI front. Uh, but you always see that with different um, cycles mm -hmm. uh, over time. We're going to see different areas of the market that are going to have uh, frothier valuations than other. And again, I, I don't mean to suggest that froth is fluff because the froth is often well-deserved given what's going on Makes in that, that specific so industry. Some of the big tech is probably having an impact. There's probably bigger VCs that are pushing lower too and the combo, all that, and probably founders too. They know that they can ask for more as well. They 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 understand what the temperature is out there. Um, yeah, that that that's a good point. Just quickly on that, as far as the founders, is that the the old kind of rule of thumb is that money gets twenty. Money gets deals twenty. Where, what does that mean? Uh, yeah, so investors, uh, new investors into a company are going to take a twenty percent stake uh, in that given funding round. So, for example, but you it, raised. Uh, two million dollars. That's a uh, uh, money gets twenty a ten million dollar valuation. Okay. Yep. Is that exactly. rule? Is that rule yeah. still holding with the AI companies? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is that it? It's holding broadly, but with AI, uh, it is uh, as you might imagine. Those uh, founders believe that they are positioned to uh, put themselves in a, a place where they can get a. a a larger stake going forward. And as a result, they may be more of a, um, you know, money gets 10 or money gets 15. So they're retaining closer to 90% of the economics. So it really depends on the space. And, and right now, obviously, AI is in that space. Uh, one, we still got one more topic to get to, but one quick one here. Uh, is big tech taking a spray and pray type of approach to doing this? Or do you think it's strategic in this in these early rounds? I think it's a little of both, uh, and we're seeing it pretty broad based. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the mega cap companies are involved, um, but we're seeing a lot of other uh, tech companies that are increasingly pushing a, a venture piece of their business. So um, the, the answer to that question is uh, a lot of it is spray and pray, to be honest. And we're seeing, you know, not not tens of deals from these companies, but over a multi-year period, hundreds of oh, deals. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, They're really active. Yeah, and so, exactly. Uh, great to know. Great perspective. And uh, we're going to shift to our final topic, which is Tesla. Some work that Brian Baker from our team and I have done, uh, along with some help. I want to give attribution. Check out our print uh, uh, story on this. But expectations for Tesla's autonomy day. Uh, cut to the chase. We think there's going to be three vehicles announced. Of course, the Robo Taxi, uh, the Model 2, Model A, call it what you like, but the $25,000 version uh, could be a strong rift off of Robo Taxi. That Robo Taxi is probably going to come through in a demo where they will use the summon feature in the Hail app and have that vehicle come around. If it doesn't come out as a demo, I think that that would be a disappointment. And uh, And the one piece where I would say we're a little bit more out on the limb on is related to uh, some sort of a van that plays into the autonomy opportunity. So think of this kind of as the beginning of uh, a different way to move around urban areas, kind of a new form of public transportation, a private public transportation form, kind of eight to 10 person vehicle. Uh, we did go back and look. Here's the bad news is that over since uh, the Model 3 came out, the, the, the minimum gap between when they announce to when they get out the door is 10 months. So it's going to be a while before we see these products. 
Thanks for joining, Mike. Thanks, everyone else, for giving a listen. On behalf of Deep Water, bye for now.